Hello, I'm Dr. Jazeer and welcome back to this uh, discussion about INICET Dermatology Recall Questions. So this is the fifth uh, video that we are doing about the various recall uh, uh, discussion about INICET. So now let's begin without further delay. The first question, a patient presents with flaccid bullous lesions involving the oral cavity and the skin. So he has lesions as shown below. So the acantholytic cells are seen on sang smear. What is the most probable diagnosis? So we understand that a patient is presenting to us with oral mucosal erosions and bullous lesions over the body. And on sang smear, we are able to see uh, sang cells. So what is sang cells? Acantholytic cells. So what is the most probable diagnosis? Options are pemphigus foliaceus, dermatitis herpetiformis, uh, pemphigus vulgaris and bullous pemphigoid. So we know very well from the clinical history, whenever in a bullous disease, oral mucosal erosions are given along with a flaccid bulla, then the most likely defect is going to be in desmoglin 3 and then desmoglin 1 and it is going to be a uh, condition called as pemphigus vulgaris. So among these options, why pemphigus vulgaris and not pemphigus foliaceous? Now if you see that in pemphigus foliaceous, oral mucosal involvement is not seen whereas in pemphigus vulgaris oral mucosal involvement may be the first symptom that you may see and why it is not dermatitis herpetiformis or bullous pemphigoid because in both these cases these are going to be sub epidermal blistering diseases now in this case you are seeing um, acantholytic cells on sang smear acantholytic cells as you know they are keratinocytes once there is a detachment of these keratinocytes they become rounded cells with a large nucleus and a perinuclear halo so that is the reason why this answer is going to be pemphigus vulgaris now let's go to the next question a 10 year old child presents with a hair loss the hair loss is patchy as shown in this image and black dots are noted in the areas of hair loss so which of the following types of tinea is this child suffering from okay that is the option that is the question so let us see what are the options the options are ectothrix endothrix kirion and <coughs> favus okay so what happens is that in this um, question the clinical picture is again suggestive of tinea capitis isn't it and then what has been given is that there has been some black dots are seen so black dots is going to be a condition called as um, black dot okay so black dot is there gray patch is there kirions are there and favors are there so kirion and favors is considered to be the inflammatory type whereas a non-inflammatory type is going to be the black dot and gray patch so from the question itself we know that since these black dots are seen it means that the hair is broken at the level of the scalp and this usually happens with endothrix kind of an infection so what are the examples of endothrix kind of an infection so you can remember it with SSTV that is uh, S is going to be uh, trichophyton Sean Lenny, trichophyton Soudanese and T and V is for trichophyton uh, tonsurans and trichophyton violation. So these are the various um, endothrix organisms that you can remember. So here the right answer is going to be SSTV that is endothrix infection. So let us see the next question that is a male born to a non consanguineous couple develops blisters at the area of friction so their previous baby also had a similar complaint and died at the age of two weeks what is the diagnosis so the options are neonatal pemphigus congenital syphilis cbdc and epidermolysis bullosa so we have discussed a similar question earlier isn't it so what happens mechanobullous diseases so what is a mechanobullous disease when you develop a bulla at the site of friction so the right answer here would be epidermolysis bullosa because in epidermolysis bullosa is going is considered to be a congenital mechanobullous disease where there are many subtypes like eb simplex junctional eb and dystrophic eb so the right answer here is epidermolysis bullosa now let's see the next question that is um, a child comes to the opd with a tense bulla over the torso the 
Biopsy of the lesion showed a sub-epidermal level of blistering and neutrophilic infiltration. So how do you manage this case? So what is the, uh, can you see this image? So what do you find in this image? Is that you are able to see that there are multiple tens bulla are seen. And this multiple tens bulla, one biopsy you can see that the bulla is being developed beneath the epidermis that is sub epidermal bulla with neutrophilic infiltration and it is a child so in child what do you think is the most likely diagnosis the likely diagnosis is going to be linear iga disease isn't it the linear iga disease this linear iga disease is also called as chronic bullous dermatitis of childhood and this is the most common bullous disease that you see in a child and the most preferred treatment or the drug of choice in this condition is going to be dapsone so among all these options like rituximab cyclosporin dapsone and azathioprine the right answer would be dapsone that is option c <coughs> Now let's see the next question that is what is the probable diagnosis of this condition affecting the hair so can you see this image what is given this is a polarizing microscopy so in polarizing microscopy you are able to see such a finding and the options are trichorexis nodosa trichorexis invaginita trichothiodystrophy and monilatrix <coughs> so these are the four options so it is we have to know what are the various findings that you see in each of these cases so let us see what do you find in trichorexis nodosa first so <coughs> trichorexis nodosa is a condition where you can see in uh, polarizing microscopy you can see that there is a longitudinal break in the hair shaft due to this longitudinal break in the hair shaft it is compared to a thrush paint brush appearance okay it is just like a paint brush that is being pulled against each other so this kind of an appearance is seen in a condition called as trichorexis nodosa let us see what is the next second option the second option is trichorexis invaginata so trichorexis invaginata is a differential diagnosis for the previously mentioned one that is trichorexis nodosa but what happens in trichorexis invaginata is that you will be able to see a ball and socket kind of a finding in trichoscopy ball and socket type of finding in trichoscopy and this trichorexis invaginata is something what you call as a bamboo hair which is seen as a part of a netherton syndrome which is seen in netherton syndrome now let's go to the third option that is trichothiodystrophy so what do you find in trichothiodystrophy we find this finding so this finding where it can be compared to a tiger tail so tiger tail banding in polarizing microscopy is seen in a condition called as trichothiodystrophy this is an autosomal recessive condition where you will be able to see brittle hairs which are deficient in sulfur so brittle hairs deficient in sulfur autosomal recessive disease tiger tail banding all these are in favor of trichothiodystrophy now the last option that is option number d is called as monolithrix so in monolithrix it is again a rare genodermatosis so what you find in monolithrix is that regularly banded ribbon sign is seen so regularly banded ribbon sign as you see in this image is seen in this rare genodermatosis called as monolithrix so this is all about um, this question now let's go to the next one which of the following is true regarding kirion so what is a kirion kirion is a inflammatory type of tinea capitis so let us see the options now the causative agent is trichophyton shonleni often seen in cashmere yellow scutula and painful bogey swelling in the scalp with follicular pustules so what is the right answer here now all these options whatever has been given is in favor of another type of an inflammatory type of tinea capitis that is called as favors okay the option a and uh, often seen in Kashmir because favors is endemic in Kashmir yellow scutula is again seen in um, favors so what is seen in Kirion is that the patient may present to you with a painful bogey swelling of the scalp 
with easily pluckable hairs as well as a regional lymphadenopathy and most often this case called as kirion may end up in a scarring alopecia as well so which is true the option d is a true option so please go with d so let's see the next question pterygium of nails is characteristically seen in so the options are psoriasis tinea unguum alopecia areata and lichen planus so where do you see pterygium pterygium is characteristic for it is a pretty direct question it is directly uh, characteristic for a condition called as lichen planus so if i ask you which is the most common nail finding that you see in lichen planus the most common nail finding is going to be thinning of the nails and the most characteristic nail finding is going to be uh, pterygium of the nails where there is a wing shaped extension so this is an example of an image where you can see pterygium of the nails as well so let's go to the next question which is true regarding behesit syndrome so the options are recurrent oral ulcer erythema nodosum superficial thrombosis and recurrent ulcer on the glands so among all these options which is the most um, the major criteria that comes in behesit syndrome is going to be the recurrent oral ulcer so in behesit syndrome we know that there is going to be a recurrent oral ulcer there is going to be uveitis and there is going to be a recurrent genital ulcers as well so recurrent oral ulcer genital ulcer along with uveitis this is going to be diagnosed as a behesit's disease so in behesit disease some test like the pathology test may be positive as well so what is true here of course you'll be getting a oral ulcer which is one of the major criteria for diagnosis and the second one that is correct is recurrent ulcer on the genitalia so these two are seen in behesit's syndrome so let's go to the next question a 50 year old female presents with violaceous lesions over the knuckles along with a heliotrope rash what is the most probable diagnosis options are sle behesit syndrome dermatomyositis and crest syndrome so heliotrope rash so the moment you close your eyes you will be able to see some purple colored violaceous kind of a rash which is compared to a heliotrope flower so this is a very typical uh, finding of one disease and the second one is that you are getting a violaceous lesion over the knuckles so heliotrope rash plus this violaceous lesions which is called as gotrans papules so what is it specific for it is specific for a condition called as dermatomyositis so it is specific for dermatomyositis so there are many other cutaneous findings in dermatomyositis heliotrope rash is one gotrans papule is another one you will get a shawl sign and then you may find this holster sign so all these things are seen in dermatomyositis now let's see the next question cobner's phenomenon is not seen in the options are lichen planus dermatitis herpetiformis psoriasis and vitiligo so in which condition are you not seeing a cobner's phenomenon what is a cobner's phenomenon when there is the uh, appearance of skin lesions at the site of trauma so wherever the skin is traumatized you find new lesions developing this is called as cobner's phenomenon also called as the isomorphic phenomenon so the most common diseases you can remember it as lvp that is lichen planus vitiligo and psoriasis so what is not present in the option here the odd one out is dermatitis herpetiformis so that is the odd one out and that is the answer for this mcq so with this uh, we are coming towards the end of an mcq discussion series of all the previous uh, ini cet papers so previous means i have included the jipmer and uh, aims questions as well so i hope all these discussions was um, of uh, help for you and i wish you all the very best for the upcoming ini cet exams wishing you once again wishing you all the very best thank you so much